Welcome to the Rideshare Guy podcast, where you will learn about the rideshare and mobility industry straight from Harry Campbell, who's got over five years experience covering the industry and has talked to thousands of drivers. There's no better place to stay up to date, entertained, and educated. So let's dive in. Alec Lace is the host of an award-winning parenting podcast called First Class Fatherhood, in which he's interviewed dads such as Tom Brady, Deion Sanders, Dana White, Jordan Belfort, Tony Hawk, and many others, including yours truly. So make sure to check out that episode with myself. He's also a longtime Uber and Lyft driver and has spread the message of his podcast with thousands of riders over the past five years, mainly driving on Friday and Saturday nights, which I like to call the party hours, until the bars close down on the Jersey Shore. And in between all that, he's also a full-time railroad mechanic for over 20 years, so clearly he's He's got a lot going on, but he took a few minutes out of his busy day uh, from work, from all of his jobs and his kids to join me on the podcast. How are you doing, Alec? Harry, it's an honor to be here with you today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so I think that's a, a good place to start. You do have a lot going on in your life, huh? A little bit, yep. Four kids, uh, multiple jobs here, got the podcast running, so I stay pretty busy. Cool. What do you enjoy most? Um, being a dad, I would say I enjoy most about it, all of it. You know, I enjoy spending time with my kids. I, I think one of the benefits of the whole COVID-19, the thing that has happened is it's given us a lot more time to be able to spend together. And for me, I see that as a big bonus. Yeah, definitely. How old are your kids? Uh, right now they're 14, 13, nine, and six. All right. Do you ever forget how old they are, their names or anything like that? Because, I mean, with four, it's kind of hard to start keep track, right? <laughs> yeah, like once a year I do when they, as the ages shift and we got summer churn and then the gaps yeah. get a little bit different. Now, that uh, gets a little tricky sometimes. But, yeah, no, and three boys and we got our girl on the fourth try. If we didn't get her on four, we'd have five by now. But we got her and she runs the show over here. Very cool. Well, you know, if you get one more, you'll have a full basketball team. So uh, <laughs> you, 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 there's always another number or goal or milestone to achieve, right? Yeah, I think we'll wait for the grandkids now. <laughs> Very cool. So, you know, I wanted to chat with you today actually about a lot of the stuff that you have going on. I think the, you know, the email you sent me and the podcast you run is really cool. As I mentioned in your bio, you know, I just went on your podcast and had a lot of fun. So we'll talk about that, your Uber driving, driving history and, you know, kind of how all of your, um, you know, basically projects kind of mingle. So, I mean, let's start with the Uber stuff. Tell me, you know, you signed up five years ago, so you almost uh, have me, you know, there aren't many people who have been, you know, you might be driving a little more than me these days, but there aren't many people people who I think uh, signed up before me, but you're close. So you joined, you signed, you joined five years ago, Uber and Lyft. So tell me more about that. When, where, how, why, why, why'd you join? Yeah. You know what? It's a little unique for me. I, I've been driving a regular taxi, regular metered mm. cab. I, I started when I was 19. I knew somebody that owned, um, you know, a cab company. He let me drive for him and that's kind of introduced me into driving a cab. So I've been doing it now for about 20 years on and off. And I've always kind of used it as what a lot of people do for now when they sign up for is quick cash on the side. And, it, and mm -hmm. back then it was literally just quick cash because, you right. know, because you had a full time were, job. Were always. Yeah, I always was a mechanic. I've been now I've been with the railroad for 20 years, over 20 years now as a, as a railroad mechanic, diesel engine mechanic on the trains. Uh, but I've always uh, I've always liked to uh, supplement the income in some other way. I was the super in my mm -hmm. apartment building for many years. Mm -hmm. I had a little vending machine business on the side and I've always kind of dabbled in little things. So. When Uber came along, a lot of people were telling me, hey, you got to try this Uber. You got to try this Uber. And I was a little reluctant because I was afraid about putting in my banking information and all of my social security number. I didn't really trust it uh, in the beginning. So I kind of came in a little bit late on it. And I wish mm -hmm. once I started doing it, I loved it because for me, not having to handle cash uh, was probably the number one thing yeah. that I enjoyed about it because I was driving in the city all the time. And it was uh, a little sketchy the hours when you drive Friday and Saturday with a regular cab versus driving Uber. It's a, I call yeah. it like the, the PG version of driving a cab. So I, I, I tried it, loved oh. it, and I've been doing it since. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I mean, with cabs, obviously it was, and I think kind of still is mainly, you know, even though they have apps, you know, a lot of it sort of was and is kind of mainly a cash business. So that's a consideration that, you know, I think a lot of drivers, like you said, don't even have to think about a lot of Uber and Lyft drivers don't even have to think about uh, back in the day. Because I mean, in that, you know, we're worried about people puking in the back seat, but I guess you were potentially worried about someone robbing you, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. And what's funny too is, uh, Harry, a lot of times now, like, you mentioned a, a lot of people will ask, oh, what is it like driving for Uber? I'm thinking about doing this. Every Uber driver hears that probably a thousand times by the time they're done driving. So yeah. when I was driving a regular when I was driving a regular metered cab, nobody ever asked me that question. Nobody ever said, hey, I'm thinking about driving a cab like no one ever said it. Now with Uber, they think about it all the time. And, yeah, puking is one of the things we worry about. Also, people shitting themselves and, uh, you know, <laughs> pissing their pants, especially at the end of the night when it gets toxic. So. 
Why, why do you think that is? Why do you think that, you know, Uber, I guess, is this, maybe you would call it, I don't know, sexy job or appealing job? And how has that changed over the last five years? Do you think it's, you know, still sort of the same as it was five years ago? Yeah, I think it's just people have an interest in it and they see it as a way mm -hmm. to make some, uh, you know, they, a lot of people think it's a get rich quick kind of scheme. They think like, mm -hmm. you know, they see the commercials like make a thousand a week and they think they're just going to make a few trips and make a thousand a week. And they don't realize that there's a little bit more into it than that. So uh, I think it does. I think they've done a great job with their advertising of it. I think so many people know what it is and, right. and people are just curious about it, especially young kids, college kids looking to make some side money and even dads. A lot of dads hit me up asking yeah. me about my experience and is it a good side hustle to have as a dad so um there's a lot of interest in it for sure yeah what's the one thing that you sort of value most from your uber and lyft driving well for me right now it's promoting my podcast everybody that comes into hmm. the into the uh into my car gets a, a card a business card i talk about the podcast uh, hmm. You know, if they're young and they don't look like they have kids, I'll ask them about their parents, their father. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he would be interested. So it, it, if, if I ha if I size up a guy that's coming in, I have it on standby. I'll play one of my top downloaded episodes so they can hmm. hear it when they go, oh, what show is this? You know, so, oh, funny you ask. It's my podcast, you know. So I'm always kind of using, uh, hmm. uh, you know, as an advertising to uh, a tool. And while I'm driving, I'm a big reader. I, I love to read. Now, I because of Uber, I've turned over to audio books. Mm -hmm. So I will always listen to an audio book. But it's also a great way for me to listen to previously recorded episodes and listen so I can make notes about what I got to edit or what I got to change. So I kind of use it in that way mm -hmm. while I'm driving as well. Interesting. Yeah, no, I, I like that sort of, you know, really taking advantage, you know, killing a lot of birds with one stone, I guess you would say. And what's what's your experience been like with promoting the podcast to passengers? Because I think that a lot of people could screw this up, you know, they could sort of do it in a way that, you know, off puts them. So, or, you know, off puts their passengers or whatever it might be. So maybe at a high level, say, you know, talk about, I mean, how many rides have you done? Or what's your rating or whatever numbers you want to share that how much money you think, you know, on the hourly that you're trying to go for just so we have a kind of baseline for your uh, driving history? Yeah, I, I think between Uber and Lyft, um, I, I think I'm somewhere like eight or 9,000 rides, uh, okay. something like something like that. Uh, like I said, I really just focus on Friday and Saturday nights. I'll drive like, yeah. you know, eight hours on a Friday night okay. and Saturday nice. night. So uh, something like that. And, and as far as I try to ease my way in, I don't try to jam the, the, the podcast down anybody's throat. Mm -hmm. Usually I'll, I'll try to talk about a subject if they're, you know, young guys that got like a football hat on, like a Giants or Jets, they'll say, Hey, who do you like this year? Whatever. And then I'll wait, you know, I'll segue into one of the NFL Hall of Famers I've had on the mm. show. I'll say, oh, you know who I was speaking with recently on my show? Oh, you have a show. And I, I try to bring it in nice yeah. and easy, I, you know, and then you can tell by the feed if they're interested in hearing more or not. So if they're not, I back off. If they are, I dive in deep. Got it. So how has it gone as far as tracking your success with promoting your podcast? Do you, you know, sort of count the number of people that have said, oh, I'm going to, you know, go listen to your podcast or do you track, track the stats of your podcast? I'm just curious how you uh, think about the results. Well, one of the direct ways that I do it is I'll have I'll say, hey, don't worry about leaving me a tip on the app. Hit me with a subscribe and then they'll do it for mm -hmm. me right there while I'm in the car with them. So I'll see them subscribing to the podcast. I'll say, yeah, don't worry about the don't worry about the tip. Please just hit mm -hmm. me with a subscribe. So I, I, I track a lot of it just, through, you know. I, I, so like you're, I say, you're physically I, seeing them subscribe. So that's a good way to track subscribe. it. A hundred percent. Yeah, that's why I try to get that. Like I try to establish a good yeah. conversation with them about it. I actually really like that too, because I mean, frankly, most passengers don't tip. And so you're sort of almost, you know, kind of like giving them an out, you know, they're already right. not going to tip. And so it's sort of like, hey, you know, instead of tipping, because I assume right. you were going to tip, right? It, how, how about you subscribe right. it's to my like podcast? It's almost like somebody's funeral there where they say, in lieu of flowers, send a donation to this or that. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. kind of like that. Like I try to just, you know, encourage them uh, more to, uh, you know, to leave it. Interesting. And so how has your podcast done? I mean, you know, I know one of the reasons when you reached out to me and I saw the, the list of guests on your podcast, I was thinking to myself, wow, this guy's have had, you know, Tom Brady has been on this guy's uh, parenting podcast. That's pretty much all I need to see right there to go on and chat with them. Of course, you had the Uber and Lyft connection. And so it was only natural. But uh, I mean, I'm assuming it's gone pretty well. But can you tell us more about how, how it's gone, whether it's num metrics, numbers, guests, whatever you want to share? Yeah, the, the best thing that happened to me was uh, having guys on. Everyone, you know, wants to know the best way to advertise the podcast. And for me, it's been these guys that I've had on when they promote it is really mm. how I get the organic growth of my show. And Tom Brady, I interviewed him while I was down at the Super Bowl. I, I, I got uh, press using the podcast. I was able to gain press access to Super Bowl Media Day. So I've been to the last two wow. Super Bowls. 
And I was able to interview Brady, Belichick, and all the Patriots. And then last year I was down there, or this February, which seems like 10 years ago now, before the COVID, <laughs> uh, I was down there interviewing Andy Reid. And uh, even the players that aren't dads, like is the biggest yeah. player at the Super Bowl this year was Patrick Mahomes. He's not a dad, but I was able to ask him about his father. What type of values did your yeah. dad instill hmm. in you? And so I was able to work the questions into the guys that weren't dads. But um, so anyway, for, for me, uh, one of the big, one of the biggest names that came on in the beginning was Dean Kane, who played Superman back in Lois and Clark, and he really enjoyed the experience. So he put out it, put it out on Twitter and Instagram, and from there it hit number one on iTunes and Kids and Family, and that made it Very a lot cool. easier for me to start. I, I really took advantage of that opportunity and grabbed a lot of guests like Deion Sanders, Kurt Warner, and a lot of these guys I got like right away to get on right after that. So it started to grow, and these guys promoted organically for me, and it's it's been doing really well, and the feedback has been great. The whole philosophy to show is to try to change this narrative on fatherhood and family life and i hear it when i drive uber this is kind of mm-hmm. what gave me the idea to start this podcast in the first place so many young guys that come into mm-hmm. the cab and they hear that i got four kids they look at me like i got four heads you know and they think that that's something that's out of the realm for them they're like that's something that i'm never going to shoot for and, and i'm trying to change that philosophy like look listen to these guys who have accomplished everything in life you know all these great feats super bowl mvps and so many navy seal team six guys and they say despite all these accomplishments it's really yeah. been through the experience of being a father that's given me the greatest sense of fulfillment and that's what i'm looking to achieve hmm. are there any uh, two or three or one or two lessons you can share from your podcast and having interviewed so many you know what i like about your podcast is you you know i'm always interested to learn from successful people but kind of about other topics right like how does a professional football player approach fatherhood and how does this guy who's an amazing you know wall street trader okay i don't i don't care so much about the wall street trading but how does he approach fatherhood something that i do care about uh, are there any kind of one or two things that have stood out or lessons that you've pulled across all the interviews you've done yeah, well, one of them, I would say, with, with Kurt Warner, uh, who was a guy uh, that, you know, came out of nowhere, basically, and became a, yeah. you know, a Super Bowl MVP and a Hall of Famer. And he spoke really well with one of the things that most dads struggle with is that work-life balance. So he, mm. he spoke about it very well. And he said that um, I learned early on that balance it doesn't necessarily mean equal, whereas I can't give eight hours a day to my job, eight hours a day to my wife, and eight hours a day to my kids. But when I'm with my wife, to be with my wife and when I'm with my Mm. kids to be with my kids. And when I'm at my job, be at my job. Because a lot of us, we have this problem when we're at our job, our minds are at home thinking about our Mm. wife and our kids. And when we're home with our wife and our kids, our mind is on our job. So it's about staying uh, focused and present to where we are and dedicating the same energy uh, towards each of those uh, things individually. Well, that is a pretty damn good advice. (laughs) I have to say. Yeah. (laughs) So you know, it's uh, funny. I, a lot of times I ask people, okay, give me your top tips or this. And it's, it's rare that I'm like, oh shit, that's actually some pretty good advice. <laughs> yeah. There's a ton of, uh, there's so much wisdom dropped on the show and it's, uh, mm-hmm. it, it's a pleasure to get a chance to speak to these guys. But just like you said, we know, we know these guys as, you know, like the Jordan Belfort, we know them as the Wolf of Wall Street. We know all these other guys um, for who they are uh, in their persona, but we don't know about mm-hmm. them as dads and how that affects them in life. And that's really what I try to get and capture and gain some of that wisdom for myself and for the audience. Yeah, well, and I think that it's kind of only natural for people to focus on the number of hours that they're putting into something because that's kind of the easiest metric to track. You know, okay, I love my family this much because I'm spending... 50 hours a week with them versus, you know, I love my family this much because every single hour that I'm with them, I'm thinking about them and only them 100%, right? Because you may have other considerations. And so that's kind of what I'm curious to know. How do you balance that? Because you've got a lot going on, you know, let's let's recap. So you've got your full-time job, you've got uh, your Uber and Lyft driving, you've also got your podcast and you've got your family. So I guess I'll turn it around on you and kind of ask you, how do you balance all that and think about it? Yeah, I, I think the best way to do it, uh, the best advice that I got for myself as far as that is I, I listen to a lot of uh, a Jim Rohn. I le- read a lot mm-hmm. of his stuff. And uh, what I try to do is never start the day until I have it finished. So, uh, you know, what I do is I do a lot of pre-planning on my day. What has to mm-hmm. happen? And I schedule. I, I, I get a good schedule. And if I don't stick to it, at least I got some type of uh, at least it eliminates that, that idea of stress or worry or being in a hurry because I have it all written down as far as what I got to accomplish, like these tasks in this amount of time. So I think just having a good planner, a good, you know, I, I'm a journaler, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm definitely, uh, you know, I, I meditate. I make sure I take time to do that every day. 
and I make carve out some time for myself. This way I kind of slow everything down for myself a little bit. But I have these key things that I want to hit. And, I, and and if you schedule them right, I think it's a lot easier to hit them all than where you wake up and say, well, I'm just going to try to get this all done without any type of plan. So I think having a good plan, finishing the day before you start it is a good idea. Yeah, I like that. I'm definitely, uh, I, I think someone called me type A the other day, I think, because I'm planning, I make a lot of lists. He was like, do you do a lot of lists? I'm like, oh, yeah, I love lists. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never the forget part, anything. The best part of the list if you make is a crossing list. things off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it feels great, you know, especially check boxes, put a little check next to something. Yeah. That, uh, that feels great. So I, I highly recommend that. And, you know, I know that there are a lot of drivers out there. There are a lot of gig workers. I mean, I think a lot of people, frankly, struggle with balancing, you know, being a father and, or, you know, mother. Well, you know, I guess a lot of your advice uh, is just as valid whether you're mother or father so we don't need to exclude any exclude anyone but i think with that uh you know work aspect and you know in my line you know uber and lyft drivers for example that are working 40 50 60 hours a week let's talk specifically you know maybe you're not in this exact situation but if you had advice for a driver or a gig worker or someone who was kind of you know really struggling with that you know like monday sunday what what do, what do i think about and when you know if i have let's say you know a, a large work commitment of hours to drive on uber but i also want to be a good dad or a good mom and spend time with my family how, how would i think about that like tactically like what's the first step day one monday sunday what should i do yeah, I think going back to what Kurt Warner said is you got to be present where you are. You know, if you're mm -hmm. if you're if these things are weighing on you while you're driving, they're, it's going to affect everything that you're doing while yeah. you're driving, and and you're not going to be fully there. You're not going to be paying attention, and you're not going to get the most out of out of the opportunity. And the same thing yeah. is when miss you come a home, turn, miss a turn, 100%. then the rider drops you, and then you lose money. You know, I could I totally like that. Yeah. So I'm thinking like Monday morning, do I wake up and start thinking about that? Sunday night, maybe start planning. What, what would you say if I'm walking through the week? Yeah, for me, I do it on Sunday. I'll plan I, I'll because the next step of after, you know, don't start the day in, in, until you have it finished is don't start the week until you have it finished. Mm -hmm. So if you do that on Sunday and you have your whole week planned out ahead of you, it just takes away so much of that anxiety because you mm -hmm. have it somewhere written down. What do I got to do? And now we have these phones here. I, I don't really use it, but I know a lot of people do with the notes and uh, all mm -hmm. different types of scheduling apps that they have. I still like the journal and the pen and paper. So that's the way I prefer to do it. But uh, Sunday night, you map it out and then, you, you know, you carve out what I do is I have a wheel uh, of like family time, work time, personal time, podcast time. And, and I mm -hmm. have it and I try to make it the pie as equal as I can um, mm -hmm. at, for the week. So it'll be and because I have four kids, I try to carve out a little bit of personal time with each kid because that's so mm -hmm. important to mm -hmm. them to have that one on one time. And even if that's just, um, you know, taking a walk to the store. At bringing a different kid with me if I'm going to go get gas in the car bringing a different kid with me to do that and even if you even if it's 10 minute 15 minute task that one on one time means the world to them sometimes especially in a week where you're so busy and you got a million things going on uh, I don't I don't want them to ever feel isolated or, or, or like they're not getting that one on one dad time. So I, I, I think it all comes back to you have a good schedule and stick to it. I would say Sunday night plan the week out and then adjust mm -hmm. it accordingly as it goes on. Got it. So it sounds like you kind of start from a place of balance where, you know, your different work commitments kind of have equal balance. I mean, I'm assuming, though, for example, your full time job is just going to take physically more hours than driving for Uber or the podcast, right? Right. Yeah, that, that's a 40 hour week. That doesn't change. So that's set in mm. stone, kind of like, you know what I mean? So that, that, that those hours are set in stone. The podcast, I can work around because I do that at my own leisure. Uber is kind of set because I do it Friday night and Saturday night. So those hours are kind of locked in and everything else. I kind of got like a free range as far as, you know, I, I'm sorry. I cook dinner every night for my for my family. So I, I, I cook dinner every night. I carve out time to make sure we have my wife and I'll have either a date night, you know, once a month. We'll try to have a, a time together, whether that be just go for a walk once a week. Uh, so I try to make sure that I have like a relate my relationship goals in check, my fatherhood goals in check, my work goals in check and, and my podcast goals in check. And I just keep track of how I'm doing on each one. If I see hmm. one that I'm lagging, I pay attention to it. You know, if you chart it all out, you could see where you're falling down and you, you, you could pick it up again, too. And something else I'd like to mention, too, is that, you know, I'm a recovering alcoholic and an addict myself, too. So I'm really high wired, high strung. I have a lot of um, uh, a lot of energy now that's freed up from dropping those addictions that I now pour into all these other hmm. things that I'm doing. So got it. And I'm assuming you don't sleep a ton either, right? 
No, I don't really. I, I, <laughs> if, if I didn't have to sleep, I wouldn't do it at all. You know, I'm a four hour guy at night. You know. Hmm. Okay, so that's starting to make a little more sense because I'm, you know, I'm an engineer, right? So I'm sitting here in my head adding a lot of this stuff up. So I'm going to uh, put you on the spot a little bit right now, if you don't mind. Walk me through like your Monday, like like literally, you wake up, what time? What do you what do you do? And let, let's see how it all uh, balances out. I'm just curious well, if you don't mind sharing. Yeah. Yeah, th this would be easy to do if it's the, during the school year. I would say. Okay. I know it's a little uh, maybe. Yeah, maybe now. more like a. But well, yeah, if it's easier, maybe do like your your typical. Because it sounds like your routine has sort of. Right. I know you know COVID has kind of upended a lot of things, but um, you know maybe exactly. maybe pre pre -COVID maybe your typical before, yeah before this. What you know, what, what would happen for me is one of the benefits for me is I work at night from my main job for the mm. railroad Monday through okay. uh, mo you know Sunday night into Thursday night. So I work. Um, where I go to work at seven o'clock at night and I come home, hmm. my, my shift ends at 3 a.m. in the morning. Hmm. And so that's a unique hours for me and it benefits me greatly. So on a Monday yeah. morning, normally when I wake up, my wife is at work and my kids are at school. So I'll Got try it. to wake up around 10 in the morning and I, I immediately start my, my meditation for the day before I do anything else. And then I'll, you know, have something to eat after I do that. And then I start right in on the podcast, whether I'm interviewing a guest that day editing hmm. the podcast that day. I do all my podcast stuff before my wife and kids come home from work. So this way, all of that stuff is out of the way and I'm not on my phone constantly once they Got come it. home from work and school. Once they come home from work and school, it's homework time, hang out with my wife a little bit, start dinner. Uh, maybe we watch a little something on TV after they're done uh, uh, with their homework. Then we eat dinner together as a family, 6.30, mm -hmm. I'm out the door and I'm heading to my job on the railroad. And then I get done with my job at, at 3 uh, o'clock in the morning. I'm home by 3.30. I have a time now for myself to kind of go through the yeah. day, take a look at what I've done, what do I need to do for tomorrow, watch a little something, eat a little something. I try to get to bed by 5 a.m. So that's really hmm. how I run it throughout the day. Hmm. Very cool. So, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it sounds like, first of all, kind of having a good partner in crime, <laughs> your wife, because, you know, it sounds like on the mornings, for example, you, when you're sleeping after your night shift, she's the one, you know, kind of getting the kids ready for school and I'm assuming feeding them breakfast and getting them you know, out the door. A full plate for that, her as right? well. Yep. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Does she work or does she stay at home with the kids? She, she stayed at home with the kids for about 13 years and then she went back to work just last year. She works uh, for the church over here. Oh, cool. um, w where my kids go to school. So uh, she, she's her hours are pretty much the same as theirs when they're in school. Got it. And uh, are there any times where your schedule kind of gets thrown out the window, something throws a wrench in it and kind of everything gets upended? Well, let's ignore COVID. For, I might ask you a question about that in a second, but let's just in a normal kind of time. Yeah, always. There, always there's, uh, there's forks come into the road here with this, especially mm -hmm. even with the podcast, because some people, they can only schedule at certain times and I'll have to, uh, you, you know, take that while I'm uh, in the middle of doing something else. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, then one of the kids gets sick or one of the kids has a play day. I mean, there's always things that they get thrown into the uh, into the schedule. Yeah. To so how do you handle those? You, ju you just got to go with the flow. I mean, you just got to, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you prioritize things. What what needs priority? What has to happen now? If I'm going to break my schedule, is, you know, is it worth it? it what, what is the uh, top priority? My wife is stuck at work. There's a problem with the car. Uh, wh whatever it may be, you prioritize the stuff to get it done. And, and that's it. Then the other stuff you have to play catch up with. Yeah. So out of all the projects you have going on in your life, projects, work, family, business, what, what do you enjoy the most and why if you kind of had to pick one or if you had to even start limiting what you could do, for example, like you, you were talking about priorities. What if it was just too much on your plate and you had to start limiting priorities? How would you kind of rank them? Uh, well, I would say my, my children and my role as a father is number one, of, mm -hmm. you know, of everything that I do. It's if, if I could spend the whole day with my kids, I'd do it every day, you know, and, yeah. and all day. I love that. I love my family. I love spending time. I would say dinner time is my favorite time of the day is because we always eat dinner together as a family. Got it. We get a chance to check in on one another. That's my top priority. Um, number two, I would say work-wise, I, I enjoy the podcast. I love speaking with mm -hmm. other dads. I love listening to the audience uh, uh, or answering emails, answering questions from all the dads, trying to encourage these young guys. Um, it's especially that they're, they're brand new into this, they're new dads and, and, and it gets difficult because they're trying to, uh, uh, you know, make sure that they can afford everything for their families and they have a lot of pressure on them early on. So I love having conversations, uh, with the young men that listen to the podcast and I enjoy, you know, just booking the guests, the, the, the enjoy yeah. of speaking with all these guys. I really get a big thrill out of that. 
Um, you know, my job at the railroad probably comes the least of all. I probably enjoy driving <laughs> Uber more than I do my job on the railroad, just because I maybe because I've been doing the job for so long yeah. uh, on the railroad, and I enjoy the the Uber because it's a little adventure, like every night, yeah. you know, on a Friday and Saturday night for me. You never know who you're going to pick up. You're never going to know what you run into. I have people, you know, I've dropped people off at the police station before, you know, down here at the Jersey Shore because they get a little crazy. They're drinking, <laughs> you know. They're all coked up and they're all hard alcohol, liquored up, you know, so you get some characters and it's it's yeah. an interesting, it makes for an interesting night, you know. So uh, I, I'll be honest with you, I enjoy it all. I enjoy everything that I do. I, I feel um, stress-free uh, through all of it. And I, I really just enjoy life and I'm growing, learning, changing, developing, uh, you know, with each day that I go on here. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like that. And I'm not too worried. You, you look like a guy that can handle yourself just fine with the, uh, the folks you see out at uh, 2, 3, 4 a.m. on the Jersey Shore. So I'm not too worried about that. <laughs> but uh, I am curious because, you know, sort of the way you ranked it, I'm assuming that you kind of make the most money from dry or sorry, from your uh, mechanic work. Right. Uh, and the train, it's sort of you've been doing it for 20 years. I'm assuming financially, you know, kind of like you said, right, maybe it's, you know, not to look down upon that job but like you said right you've been doing anything that you do for 10 20 30 years i think sometimes can become a grind or it can become something that you don't enjoy as much as you know the thing that's new the thing that's shiny so um you know i think a lot of people struggle that right like how do you balance kind of like making money right if i'm someone who wants to go out and you know i have to drive 40 50 hours a week on uber to make enough money to pay for rent to pay for food and all of that how do you kind of balance that need to kind of make money with the things that you enjoy which whether it's your family or the podcast or whatever whatever it might be. Yeah, Harry, I think everybody struggles with this. Uh, maybe yeah. you know yourself. Like I, I have found that um, when I was only curious or only hunting to make money, I found myself doing things that I didn't like to do. And it was like mm -hmm. I, when, when the number one goal was just make money, just make money, I was doing a mm -hmm. lot of things that I didn't want to do. And that's what it led to. When I, now, the, the, a lot of people would ask me like the, about the podcast – um, especially early on, like, oh, are you making any money doing that? Are you making any money? Because they know I'm somebody that never did anything unless I got a dime out of it. And that was yeah. always my philosophy. <laughs> like, I was, I, I hustled in the wrong way early on in my life, made some terrible mm. mistakes, uh, got involved in some shady stuff for, for a long time. And what, what I've done now is I pursued something that I really love, wasn't making any money out of it. And, and I was doing it for the pure joy of what I was doing. And now that's turned into income for me. And now mm. it's scaled up. I just recently signed a major book deal with HarperCollins. Oh, wow. uh, so congratulations. Uh, th yeah, there's a big book coming in, in the making that's going to be an accumulation of all this wisdom, knowledge and experience yeah. from all these guys that I've interviewed. So I'm looking forward to that. But it, it's opened the door for so many different opportunities for me, Harry. I've never you know, I'm down at the Super Bowl talking to Tom Brady. I'm a guy that at one point yeah. in my life, <laughs> uh, at one point in my life, I, I got a lifetime ban from Giant Stadium. And now oh, wow. turn it around. Fast forward. Here it is. The NFL inviting me to come on the field. and I'm interviewing the greatest player that they've ever had in the league. So yeah. it's a big turnaround for me. It's been a shift in my philosophy uh, of how I view things. And I think since I've changed the way I looked at everything, everything I looked at started to change. And, and it's been a very positive experience for me. I've been de I've had uh, security clearance, uh, White House press credentials. I've been down at the White House, uh, hmm. you know, interviewed Dana White. Dana White loved the, loved the conversation, invited my wife and I to come and meet him at UFC in Madison Square Garden. Wow. So we went to the fights with him. And, uh, you know, it's opened the door for so many opportunities for me just for pursuing a passion that I've had instead of chasing the dollar. So, uh, that's why I kind of ranked the railroad last because I got into it chasing the dollar. So um, mm -hmm. it's definitely my passion about speaking about fatherhood to fathers. It has really opened up so many opportunities for me. Yeah, that, that's really cool. And I think there are a lot of interesting angles to unpack. I mean, just sort of even, you know, I'm thinking about it like, wow, if I did a podcast for a year and I got the chance to interview Tom Brady at the Super Bowl, like that alone would be worth it to me, probably. <laughs> and that was, you know, sort of the first thing of many that, uh, you know, the doors that sort of opened up uh, through the podcast, you know, like I, I obviously run the podcast myself. And, you know, there's income opportunities with the podcast. But, you know, frankly, unless you're like a Joe Rogan type or, you know, someone with tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of downloads per episode it's gonna be hard to make a full-time living much much less you know kind of any decent amount of money but uh, like you said I do think there are a lot of other ancillary opportunities and I think also just kind of balancing you know it, like you said it's different for everyone how you might balance those opportunities but uh it sounds like you're kind of you know you've had a lot of success in looking for opportunities that weren't all you know money is a component of it but it's not all about the money yeah, and you know one of the biggest benefits, Harry, is down the line when my kids start having kids, 
uh, they're going to have this treasure trove of conversations that I've had with very well-known dads about the stuff that they're going through that they can listen to. And it, I, I just think uh, that yeah. that alone uh, for me is really worth its weight in gold. So it, it's definitely my kids are proud of it. They've seen that, they, you know, they, they've seen where I started this from and, and they've seen how far it's come in just two years. And I'm excited about the future of it just because I'm really enjoying it. And, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a win-win all around, you know, for my family and for myself. Yeah, very cool. Well, I wanted to end this interview with one uh, rideshare question. So I'm curious to know, what's something that you picked up while driving um, that you've applied to other areas of your life or business? You know, it could be a life, it could be something deep, like a life lesson. It could be a joke, just whatever one thing that's been really impactful to you that you've kind of uncovered while driving that you've been able to apply to some other area of your uh, life or business. Uh, Anything come to mind? Uh, it, it's tough to say, like I said, because I've, I've been doing this for a very long time. So uh, I would do, you know, back with Meter Cab was a, a totally different ball yeah. game. Uh, and now it's kind of changing it. But for me, uh, I definitely uh, I, I, one of the things that's cool f- about this for me is that I become kind of like a little bit of a counselor uh, to a hmm. lot of these young kids at night, especially the young girls. Uh, I've talked so many young girls out of going to these guys houses that they just met. <laughs> Uh, you know, making these horrible decisions. And so um, I, I've kind of, uh, you know, enjoyed, the, you know, that role of it a little bit more. And, um, you know, I, I I just think, you know, each experience brings something new. I, you never know yeah. what you're going to run into there at night. So I don't know necessarily which uh, I've picked up. I think maybe just the communication skill of yeah. speaking, speaking with so many different people, um, you know, thousands of different people over over the years. So, I mean, that, that could be one thing that's helped me uh, in my day to day life. Yeah, well, and I could easily see, you know, talking to kids, especially I think when they get into the teenage years is very difficult. And so I could imagine if you've had a number of, you know, deep, uh, heartfelt, emotional conversations with all sorts of different people, I imagine that would give you some sort of leg up in conversations with your own kids uh, down the road. So very cool to hear about all of that. And I think uh, definitely where can people listen to your podcast? Where can they find out? Uh, I'm excited to check out this book in the future, too. So I didn't know you had that coming, but I'll definitely uh, be a reader of that. We'll share some info about where people can find you and check out more of your work yeah harry everywhere that podcast can be heard you know itunes and spotify iHeartRadio, uh, firstclassfatherhood.com uh, you google first class fatherhood you'll find me somewhere uh, instagram twitter all that stuff so uh, cool. i'm alec lace on all them things so and also I, I love how uber has that little thing where you could put in there a uh, fun fact about yourself that's another thing that starts the conversation because i put i host the podcast where I've interviewed some of the names and then people mm. will say, Oh wow, you host the podcast. So that kind of starts it on its own, but yeah, you can find a podcast anywhere. First class fatherhood. Yeah. That's a good tip. Another driver told me that a while ago that they put some, I don't know, some business or marketing opportunity in there. And then, you know, then that way it's instead of people having to, them having to tell them about their business, it's like, now you have people asking exactly. you, right? They so ask. inbound yep. is uh, yep. always a lot more powerful. So we'll leave a link to all that in the show notes and uh, really appreciate you coming on Alec. And you've got a lot of cool stuff going on. So I appreciate you sharing your perspective on business life and uh, family and uh, wish you all the best. Harry, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on. 